Hello, and welcome to CA SysView Exception Processing, Role Types and Trigger Levels. What we're going to discuss today is some, some updates to some exception processing that have come out of, um, I suppose, numerous customer requests or customer questions in some cases where there was really maybe some misperceptions of how exception processing currently worked. But the, uh, the, the uh, misperceptions were actually just good enhancement ideas as well. So we're kind of trying to incorporate kind of everything that everybody wants. So what we're gonna talk about is thresholding rule types today. And we're adding a couple rule types known as above and below and how they compare to the existing rule types of upper and lower. Then we're gonna move on to trigger levels, what they mean and kind of show you what I, um, a change, a status, and then a new one that we're calling not normal, how they all differentiate. So just as a, a quick pictorial example of what you're seeing as a screenshot is actually the um, what you would see as if you added a new threshold um, exception definition for an MVS threshold, or if you edited an existing one. And the key things that we're gonna look at is what I have in the yellow box. And we're gonna look at rule type, trigger level, problem limit, warning limit, and duration. And we need to at least first discuss what all those things mean, because in some cases, that's where I think there is a misperception. So as kind of a, a quick dictionary lesson here, you know, what is a rule type? Essentially a rule type is the algorithm used to calculate the value over a duration. Okay, a rule is used to determine, also determine the status or somebody might say the color of that, um, the status of a metric. So it might be, you know, so we're gonna compute a value over a period of time that will then be used to determine the evaluation of that you know, metric and its associated thresholds. And we will assign a status, which is typically normal warning or problem. The, the next keyword there is trigger level. And different from rule type, trigger level is basically what is the method used to trigger actions and, and um, notifications. After we assign a value and a status, then how do I determine whether I want to be told about it is essentially the idea here. The problem limit is just the value, if exceeded, will be determined to be a problem status. Warning, of course, then is if that limit is exceeded, that would define a warning status. Duration, and this is probably where some people have a, a misperception of what it does, is a duration defines the number of intervals used from the current going backwards, current time going backwards, that are used when calculating a value with any specific rule type. So if you have a duration of two, we will evaluate the last two intervals. In a lot of cases, compute an average of those last two intervals. And, and that's what duration is. You can use durations to effectively smooth, um, smooth out values and it reduces spikes and noise. Okay, so the bigger the duration, probably the, the larger amount of smoothing you get. Okay, so what duration isn't? Duration is not the interval at which evaluation is occurring. So if you set the duration to five, we will still calculate, you know, the, the um, we will still do the evaluation minimally at least once a minute. There are, there are some folks that have um, thinking that this is, means that we will only do it once every five minutes. It's, if you have it set to five, we will evaluate the period of time over five minutes, but it's a rolling five minute, say average. All right. So what we're, what we're gonna talk about first is the upper, uh, rule type, which is one that exists, but let's make sure we understand how it works today and then we'll talk about the new ones. So an upper limit 
rule type defines the upper um, warning and problem limit values that a, a metric collection can use. So if the metric, if the metric average, and specific word there is average, for the specified duration exceeds the warning or problem limit, then any defined actions can be triggered. And again, the key point to this is it's the average value for the defined duration. So if you have a duration of three, we will take the last three minutes or the last three collected pieces of data and average them and use that value to determine or evaluate it against thresholds. So quick algorithm on the top that just shows you how we assign the status. And then we'll do a quick example here. So if the average CPU percent busy over the last two minutes is 93. So what that two minutes means is we have a duration of two. And for our defined limit or our, our threshold definition, we're gonna say the duration is two minutes. We would like a warning at 80% and we'd like it to be a problem at 90%. And as I said, the, the average was over two minutes would be 93. So where does that fall in? Well, based on the algorithm above, we would assign a status of problem because 93 is greater than 90. The same thing kind of occurs in the opposite direction with lower. Again, lower is just a, a, a lower limit threshold typically used for um, storage related metrics or maybe the lack of resource usage, but it's when you wanna know when things are getting smaller rather than bigger. Um, the same rules apply as with the upper though, it's just in the opposite direction. You know, the duration will be used to determine how many intervals are averaged together and then evaluated. So in this case, we're gonna say, you know, the average amount of free common storage over the last two minutes was 128K. The duration is two minutes. And you gotta think about this one now, when you get your warnings and problems, they're gonna be in opposite order than you might normally think about it. So you would get a warning if the value is less than 256K and you would get a problem if it's less than 64K. So using that evaluation, 128, is less than warning, but it's not less than problem. So this would be reported with a warning status. So now comes to a, a new rule type that we've created and it's called above. And what this means is an above limit rule type defines the upper warning and problem limit values that a metric can use. But in this case, it's if the metric value exceeds the warning or problem limit values for each and every collection interval over the specified duration, the defined actions will be triggered. Okay, so the key point in this one, it's a sustained value. We will still compute a value or an average value over the duration specified because we have to report a number of what it was or what was evaluated. But that when it's compared against your, your definitions and over a duration, that value must exceed your limits in each and every interval of the duration. So in this case, our computed average for CPU busy was 93%. The duration is three minutes. You got the same warning of, of 80 and 90. So in this case, the important thing here is using the algorithm, the status is gonna be a problem, but only if the value that was found in each of the three intervals exceeded 90%. Because it is possible, remember, that you, know, you could have, in the last three intervals, you could have a value of 89, a value of you know, 95, and a value of 100. So the average of those three numbers would be bigger than 90, but there was one interval that did not exceed 90, so it fails that rule. Now, in that case, it would probably trigger the, the warning um, um, specification. So anyway, it, it is, it's just important to know 
that the average for one of these rules could be above the value, but it did not exceed it in all specified intervals and therefore it will not trigger that definition. It might trigger the lower um, warning, but it has to exceed all, all durations. Same thing applies to the below rule. So what this says is for each and every collection interval specified based on duration, the number that we found or monitored in each interval must be below, and it must be below in a sustained um, manner. So the same thing when you're collecting that, in this case, again, the common free storage, it's 128 over the last three minutes. If in each and every case in the last three minutes it was evaluated and it was below the defined limits, it would then be triggered. So the upper and lower were just averages and averages, you know, you can get spikes and, and lows and highs, but you get an average. In this case, each individual value. Okay, moving on to trigger levels. And again, this is kind of the, what happens after we do the evaluation? You know, what do you want me to tell you? How do you want me to cause a trigger to happen? So a trigger, ha you know, a threshold when it triggers, it'll trigger when one of the following occurs. And this is specific to our trigger level known as change. And the idea here is tell me, tell me when the evaluation changed is the reason for this. And the first part of this is if the condition gets worse within the same status. So if you have a stat, currently have a status of warning or problem, and essentially the number gets higher. If you've already been notified and the number gets higher, we'll notify you again. The second bullet there is the status value changes. So anytime the evaluation changes the status from say normal to warning, warning to problem, problem to warning, problem to normal, or if you wanna think about it as if the color changes, you would be notified. Okay, so in this particular case, we're gonna do a quick example on the right-hand side. My example, and this will be the starting example for each of my three kind of bullets here. My, my threshold is defined the warning at 80%, problem at 90%. The last triggered value is 95% known as problem. And last triggered value is, this is the last time we did a notification to somebody or the actual um, actions were triggered. So in our first test here, the new value is 97. That would be evaluated to be a problem. Question is, does it trigger? The answer is yes. Now the question is why? Well, 97% is worse or greater than 95. So the problem essentially got worse. So we are going to notify you again. And that falls into the first bullet on the left-hand side that says the condition got worse within the same status. Bullet two, where you have the new value of 92. And again, we're gonna compare it back to the guy at the top there, the last triggered of 95, not the, the second bullet there. But if we do an evaluation of 92, that would get evaluated as being a problem because it's greater than 90. Would it trigger? And the answer is no. And the reason is we previously triggered at 95, 92 is not worse. So we are not going to tell you again. The bottom bullet there is our new value is 95, status being warning, does it trigger? Yes, it does. The reason is you changed statuses. You went from problem to warning, or in a lot of cases, you might think from red to green. Now, a key point on this is you use change when you want to reduce the nagging of thresholds. You know, the idea here is I don't want to tell you every single time. I want you to tell when something got worse or something changed. The status one is slightly just a smaller version of change it only alerts and gives you a notification whenever the status value changes, or you might say the color changes. So it's a very simple thing. These are the same examples as before. And I'll just point out the, um, the, the first one there. Again, we started with the 95 at problem. Our new value is 97. 
still a problem. Doesn't matter if it got worse or not, it did not change color or status. It's still a problem. You're not going to get told again. Uh, we'll jump to the bottom one. Um, 75 goes to normal. That does change a status color. It goes from problem to normal. Therefore, that meets the criteria of the status trigger level, and you will get new notifications. Okay, the, the final thing here, and this is the new trigger level known as not normal. Now, this one, hopefully it's somewhat intuitive. I want to be triggered, I want to be notified, I want that actions to be triggered anytime it's evaluated in a not normal status. Okay, so that includes things whenever you get a status change. It will definitely trigger when you change from you know color to color. And I will also point out that it, 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 you only get triggers when you are above normal. But remember, we always, when you go down in color or down in um, problem status, problem to warning and warning to um, normal, that will always trigger a normal case as well because we always have to tell you when this um, gets better. So again, in the top case, you start with 95 being a problem. In next case is you got a 97, that's still a problem. Does it trigger? Yes. Um, why? Because problem is greater than normal. It's in a not normal condition. Um, same thing on the next one where it's 92. 92 is less than the 95 where we've already triggered that. But in this case, you said you want to be notified anytime it's not normal. The bottom one, of course, we go from 94 we're going essentially from 95 down to 75, which is a status of normal. Why does it trigger in this case? Well, it, it's now in a normal state, which is you know opposite of not normal, but we still have to tell you because the problem, it went from problem to normal. So we have to tell you that you were previously in a not a normal state and now you are. So the big difference between this one is you do get nagging we're gonna tell you every single time that it's not in a normal status. And that's fine if that's what you want. It's, you know, you get more of the repetitive actions and messages. And again, you'll get alerting every time it's evaluated that the status is greater than normal or if it was previously out of normal and goes back. That concludes our discussion on CA SysView exception processing role types and trigger levels. In summary, we have covered the attributes that exception definitions can have. We discussed the difference between the threshold rule types upper and lower and above and below. Finally, we discussed the trigger levels change, status, and not norm. You should now be comfortable when it comes to assigning rule types and trigger levels to CA SysView exception definitions.